Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video we are going to take a close look at a mini PC, but this is not your typical mini PC, this is going to be something interesting, or I think it's going to be interesting, do for emulation and also for maybe some basic gaming. This is the M6S N112G and yeah, I ordered myself the UK version, whoops, I already got myself a converter for this, but what you're getting is a very interesting mini PC, and yep, the downside to these things, because they're so compact, yeah, Yep, they are going to be a little bit more expensive than let's say the cheaper and the bigger models but this thing looks kind of cool i love this bluish metallic look or something but we're having a quite interesting configuration with two of usb ports at the front the on and off switch at the side and micro sd option at the back we're having two hdmi rg45 usb 3.0 and then we're having the usb c and of course the USB-C is going to be for the input for the power supply and then here we're having the headphone jack out and that's actually it so and of course the power supply where I ordered myself the wrong one but I have the converter so that's not going to be a problem whatsoever because the input is 100 to 240 volts and what the hell my camera is doing but <laughs> the output is going to be 12 volts 3000 milliamp it's basically typical with these things but in here we're finding the toilet paper manual and of course ooh, an hdmi cable and the deluxe toilet paper manual with some explanation about how you need to connect it and yada 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 but i'm very curious what are we getting when it comes to less emulation performance because these n100s are not expensive or at least this is a little bit more expensive due of the form factor but Maybe we're going to have some interesting, let's say, overall performance. So let's find out. <laughs> All right, so let's do a quick teardown. So I already did tear down with the previous models and these things are very nicely put together. <laughs> I was thinking, do I get myself a wrong screwdriver? No, I didn't. So what we need to do is removing the tiny screws, four of them, and we're going to remove the bottom part. All right, so there we go. And the bottom part is actually made out of plastic. So the first thing that we will see is the SSD in the inside. And I bought it with a 256 gigabyte. And this is going to be the RAND SK. Person never seen it before, but that's the main problem you're getting with these, let's say Chinese, let's say boxes that you are going to have a lot of weird brands in here. We have Lexar, I think one of the familiar and better ones, but so far you can just rip it out and you can just reflash it if you want to put some bottle zero on it, if you don't want to use, let's say, Windows at all, but it's one of the things you can do. But of course, upgradability with these things is very limited. For the next phase, let's get ourselves a different tool, the Imbus, and the reason because we need to remove these four screws again for basically removing the other part because I wanted to showcase what we're finding there. How is the overall cooling? And how does it look in the inside with the other side? In the other side! Alright, so we're going to remove the EO shielding. So underneath over here we're finding the Wi-Fi controller. And this is just an Intel. Alright. So let's check out if we can remove it. No, we can't. Because I'm guessing this is holding everything in its place. Now I'm just going to be honest, I'm always doing this very carefully. I don't want to destroy anything. I don't know if I can even remove the other side. If I know there is nothing that I can remove in here. There's just a piece of plastic still in there. I'm already leaving my plastics on. Hmm. So where am I going to be normally a savage and rip this thing apart? So the thing that I needed to do is actually like removing the two antennas over here. Removing the tape. So we're having some space because I do see there is some movement going on over here. But the main problem, I think it's also stuck on this piece of plastic. I can also like, try to bend the plastic and lift it out. But then of course we're having the two ports or at least like the two ribbon cables are connected over there. So yeah, we can remove everything, but I can already tell you, due of my experience, I almost know for sure the other side there is nothing much than a fan and there is no let's say, replaceable memory. And yep, to save myself a lot of headache and destroying this thing, I'm going to believe it by this because the answer, I know, we cannot upgrade the RAM. No, I know for sure. All right, so let's do a quick overview of the chipset with CPU Z. So in here we're having the Intel N100, the Alder Lake, with a max TDP of six watts. The package is the socket 1744. And yeah, when you're looking at the overall specification, it's not going to be like super exciting because this thing isn't really made for gaming, but we're still going to be trying to do so. 
The bus specification is in PCIe Express 3.0. Memory 12 GB DDR5. That's <laughs> that is a lot. Yeah, yeah, they are claiming to have a lot of different slots, but yeah, I can tell you that this is not correct. I don't know what's going on over here, but it says they have like four slots. But yeah, no, I really didn't tear down in here, but there's no way there are so many slots in this thing. Doesn't matter. Overall, like say the Intel huge HD graphics is also not a, like say powerhouse when it comes to the GPU, but it doesn't matter. It's just actually what we're getting. Okay, I just wanted to see how far we can push it. I'm running Cinebench R23 on the background and we're having a Celsius of 72. That's kind of nice. And one thing I've noticed that this thing is not loud at all because I've seen the previous models. They were like sounding like mini vacuum cleaners. This thing is very silent. And overall, the fan is spinning on almost its maximum potential around 3000 RPM. So starting off with some Street Fighter 4, the arcade edition, or oh, sorry, it was Super Street Fighter 4 arcade edition. But when you're looking into the games, this is absolutely great. You can actually play the game on, let's say, a mini PC. You did have some dips when it's starting of the game, but throughout the game, it runs absolutely great. Hadouken! 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 So when it comes to older games, they will run okay or absolutely great on here. But you need to take consideration, it's absolutely like mind-blowing. They're having this tiny mini N100 that can actually play a AAA game from many, many years ago. Of course, if you want to deep dive into gaming, it's recommended to get something different because this is not powerful enough. One of the examples we're having over here, that the loading times is quite long compared with, let's say, named Ryzen. But of course, we're having a different price point. But when actually getting into the game, it seems to be running just fine. Some of the games are so much more demanding when it comes even for indie games that it will not run perfectly 60 FPS or you need to lower it to all the settings low. But with 3 of Rage 4, you can just actually see 1080p, all the settings set to high, it runs perfectly and we still have a little bit of room left when it comes to the GPU performance. But alright, so when you're looking at some Crash Bandicoot trilogy, yeah, this is absolutely trashing and crashing the party because the game is just unplayable with, let's say, 30 frames per second, sometimes 20. Yep, and this is actually what we're having. So three-dimensional games are not recommended to be played on this device. Okay, so in the graphic settings here, we can mess around with some things. For example, we can lower it to 30 FPS. So let's say we're going to have 30 FPS to the maximum, and we're going to be scaling this thing down to all the way, so let's say 1000 by 600. So this is going to be looking absolutely horrible. But again, yeah, that's the thing that we're having with a device like this. So here you can just actually see that it is hitting way more. So let's leave it to 60. And yeah, so now we can finally play some Crash Bandicoot at a, <laughs> at a decent amount of frames per second. But it's one of the things that you need to do for actually enjoying this game. Okay, so let's start off with some emulation with the PlayStation 2. Let's start with that because everything before PlayStation 2 runs just fine. So I want to mainly focus on this particular, let's say, couple of systems that are more demanding and can be played on, let's say, older mini PCs or at least like some older game boxes. Okay, so PlayStation 2 seems to be running fine, but we need to set it to 720p, 1080p. The N100 doesn't really have enough power to run it on that kind of resolution. <laughs>
So when it comes to PlayStation Portable and God of War, getting the 60 FPS, we have set it to four times resolution. Maybe we can tweak it to five times, depending on what kind of game you're actually going to be playing. But so far, it's going to be an overall good experience. So that's absolutely great. So starting off with some GameCube and F-Zero GX, a more demanding game to emulate. And on 1080p resolution, you do see some stutters going here and there. So let's get into the gameplay and let's see how it actually plays. If we still have too many stutters, we can also put it back to 720p. I'm up! I'll do it when I do it! Are you ready? What was that? That was close! Even just a single ring is an... But I'm kind of so disappointed when it comes to the Sega Dreamcast. We needed to put a 1280 by 960 resolution. And where I was at least like expecting full HD. With full HD, Data Life didn't run that great and had a lot of issues. And that's quite unfortunate. So let's move on to another game on full HD. So this is less demanding, but it runs quite nice. We're having 52 has been used to the, let's say overall GPU. So that is great. So normally we should have a little bit of a wiggly room when it comes to, let's say the performance. But again, you should tweak every single game to a certain level, depending like how you want to play it. And how, of course, how many FPS you want to get. But this is actually the overall performance with some single Dreamcast. So it's great to see this on full HD on this mini PC, but I was expecting way more. And if you wonder how it's with PlayStation 3, in my like say case, this is absolutely unplayable. Nan 100 is not the way you want to play, and we need to have way more power for this. So for me, PlayStation 3 is absolutely a skip when it comes to this low power device. Look at the loading times. <laughs> Even if it was booting up and playable, this is just absolutely laughable. You can get yourself a cup of tea. So when you're looking at this compact size, I love these things, but the main problem is that there comes a lot of side limitations. To begin with, when you're looking at, let's say, yeah, the problem of upgrading, what you see is what you're getting. And of course, when it comes to the heat, also there, yeah, it's compact. It will have a lot of heat coming out of this thing. And thus are one of those downsides, but it is compact and we do have a lot of USB ports. Emulation performance of these things are not bad at all, especially when you're having one of these things for not a lot of money. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and let me know what you think of this model. Would you pick it up? And it will be great to see you in the next video.